Well, my name is Barbara Chabon, uh, earlier Barbara Wilson, and I started Seal Press with Rachel Da Silva in 1976. Could you tell us a little bit about the origin of Seal Press? We'd love to hear the story. Rachel and I met at a party. I had heard that she had bought a large letterpress, and I asked her to teach me to set type. So the next day I went over, and we started immediately setting type to make broadside. I think my first thing that I printed was a quote from Kafka. <laughs> and uh, we went on to print a poetry checkbook that summer. We scrounged the money together. We each put in $40, and that was the start of Seal Press. From then on, other publishers, other uh, poets actually, sent us their uh, manuscripts. And uh, we did poetry for the first two or three years. Not too many books, but a few. And how did you go from poetry to women's nonfiction? We were at a book festival, uh, and a woman came up to us, a middle-aged woman with red hair named Ginny McCarthy, and she had a manuscript. Someone had told her she should come to us, and at first we sort of waved her away because we basically did a short fiction, novel, a few novels, a children's book, and poetry. But she had a very compelling story. She was a social worker, and she had tried to get a book published in New York. Uh, she had an agent, a very good agent, Francis Golden, actually, who had tried 40 publishers with this book called Getting Free. And it was a book about getting away from abusive relationships, recognizing that you were in one and how to get free. And I said I would take a look at it, and I was convinced from the first time I read it that this was really, really important. And part of the reason it had been turned down is that publishers didn't think that women would actually have the nerve to go into a bookstore and ask for a book on the subject of domestic violence. It, there were lots of shelters at that time. They were kind of grassroots. They were lo loosely knitted together. But there was only the beginnings of a national movement and not much discussion about it. So I worked with Jenny for a year on this, and we had bake sales, we had fundraising events, we asked for donations, and we did a lot of pre-sales with a flyer uh, asking the feminist bookstores and also the shelters if they would order in advance. And somehow or other we printed 3,000 copies, which were sold out almost immediately within a couple of weeks. And the New York Times ran a big article about Getting Free and Ginny. And we were completely taken by surprise. Ginny had to mortgage her house so that we could have the funds to go back to print. But of course we were able to repay her. And that was really in some ways the foundation for Seal Press. We changed from being a literary press entirely to being a press that was also focused on women's issues. And from then on, uh, we first contacted a friend of ours, Evelyn C. White, and asked her if she would like to write a book for black women. And uh, then we contacted a woman who wrote a book that was partly in Spanish and partly in English, um, and continued publishing books on domestic violence. Mm -hmm.